Zucker Nike is a medical doctor, so we should always trust everything he says about cosmology. Unless, of course, he's clearly lying. Over the past few decades, Muslim apologists went all in on two arguments, the perfect preservation of the Quran and the amazing scientific accuracy of the Quran. People like Ahmed Didat and Zakir Naik were successful with these arguments for two main reasons. One, their listeners were all too eager to accept any defense of the Quran, no matter how absurd. And two, non-Muslims didn't know enough or care enough to offer much of a response. But times are changing. Critics of Islam are exposing lies faster than Sheikh Yasser Qadi can say that the standard narrative has holes in it. Let's consider an example. Zakir Naik has a famous lecture and a book titled The Quran and Modern Science, Compatible or Incompatible? The first argument he gives is supposed to show that the Quran talked about the Big Bang in two different verses nearly 14 centuries ago. This is Islam's greatest living apologist, so you're going to want to hear this. In the field of astronomy, in 1973, there were a couple of scientists who got the Nobel Prize, and these couple of scientists they described the creation of the universe and they called it the Big Bang. The 1973 Nobel Prize in Physics had nothing to do with the Big Bang. I assume Zakir Naik is referring to Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, who won the Nobel Prize in 1978 for their discovery of the cosmic microwave background radiation. And they said that initially, our universe, it was a primary nebula. Then there was a big bang. There was a secondary separation, which gave rise to galaxies, the stars, the planets, the sun, the moon, and the earth on which we live. This they called as the big bang. So according to Zakir Naik, the medical doctor, there was initially a primary nebula then, the Big Bang. It was a primary nebula. Then there was a Big Bang. You know, it's been a while since my science days, but I know that there are scientists, there are physicists who watch my videos. Feel free to enlighten me if I'm missing something. Is it just me or is Zakir Naik? Islam's greatest living apologist, spouting complete nonsense here. He says that according to the Big Bang theory, there was a nebula, then the Big Bang. A nebula is a giant cloud of gas and dust. The Big Bang theory doesn't claim that there was a giant cloud of gas and dust before the Big Bang. The claim is that there was a singularity, which is nothing like a nebula. A nebula isn't remotely similar to a singularity. Now, I don't want any of you Zakir Nike fans to get into trouble in physics class when you take a test and give answers that you learned from Zakir Nike. So let's read a quick summary of the Big Bang from the Institute of Physics. Most physicists believe the universe was born in a Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago. In it, the energy making up everything in the cosmos we see today was squeezed inside an inconceivably small space, far tinier than a grain of sand or even an atom. So, not a giant cloud of gas and dust. Then, this unimaginably hot and dense cauldron, for whatever reason, ballooned at a terrifying rate. In the very first second of the universe's existence, our understanding of what was going on is surprisingly good. We know that the concepts of time, space, and the laws of physics very quickly solidified. From there, order started to emerge out of the chaos. First to take shape were subatomic particles like quarks, then bigger particles like protons and neutrons. About three minutes later, 
the universe had cooled to one billion degrees Celsius. This allowed protons and neutrons to come together through fusion and form nuclei, the charged cores of atoms. But after 20 minutes, the universe was no longer hot enough for fusion. What was left was a hot, cloudy soup of electrons and hydrogen and helium nuclei. This stage lasted for about 380,000 years. Eventually, the cosmos cooled enough for electrons to pair up with nuclei and make the first atoms. It then took hundreds of millions of years for the first stars to form and light up the darkness, and even longer for the universe to start to resemble what we see today. Notice, hundreds of millions of years for the first stars to form and light up the darkness. Okay, time for more science education from our favorite medical doctor. Then there was a big bang. There was a secondary separation, which gave rise to galaxies, the stars, the planets, the sun, the moon, and the earth on which we live. This they call as the Big Bang. So he says that the Big Bang was a secondary separation which gave rise to galaxies, stars, planets, the sun, the moon, and the earth on which we live. Just keep in mind that it took hundreds of millions of years for the first stars to form and billions of years to get our sun and our moon and the earth on which we live. Back to Dr. Naik to show us how the Quran describes this. The glorious Quran mentions this in a nutshell, 1400 years ago, in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, the ayah I started my talk with. The Quran mentions the Big Bang in a nutshell in Surah 21, verse 30. Let's go ahead and read it. Have those who disbelieve not considered that the heavens and the earth were sewn together and we rent them asunder? and we made every living thing from water, will they not then believe? Does that actually sound like the Big Bang Theory? The heavens and the earth were sewn together and then Allah rent them asunder? Let's let Zakir Naik explain. And it says, Avalam yara lazina kafiru. Do not the unbelievers see. Anna samawati wal arda ka'na that the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. This verse of the glorious Quran speaks about the Big Bang in a nutshell 1400 years ago, which science has discovered recently. So, the heavens and the earth were joined together, then Allah separated them. Zakir Naik is interpreting heavens here as the universe. This would mean that Allah separated the earth from the universe. Would any cosmologist on the planet describe the Big Bang as the separation of the Earth from the universe? Of course not. The Earth didn't form for another nine billion years, and when it formed, it was part of the universe, not separate from the universe. According to the Quran, the Earth is separate from the heavens because the heavens are these dome-like structures that Allah holds in place above the earth. But Zakir Naik is trying to fit this into Big Bang cosmology, and he's got some problems. Side note, the earth and the heavens being together and then being cloven asunder is a version of what's normally called the world egg creation myth. The heavens and the earth were together in some sort of cosmic egg, then some creative force broke them apart. If the divine origin of the Quran is confirmed because it includes this story, a lot of other ancient writings must be miraculous because cultures around the world had versions of the world egg creation myth. But more on this in videos where we discuss Muhammad's plagiarism. Zakir Naik's about to get himself into even more trouble with another verse that talks about the Big Bang. The glorious Quran says in Surah Fusilat, Chapter number 41, verse number 11. Moreover, he comprehended in his design the sky when it was smoke and said to it, and the earth 
come eat together willingly or unwillingly, and they said, we come in willing obedience. Surah 41, verse 11. Then he turned to heaven while it was smoke, and said unto it and unto the earth, come willingly or unwillingly. They said, we come willingly. Notice, once again, just as in Surah 21, verse 30, that heaven and earth were already present at the Big Bang. It gets worse if we read the rest of the passage, starting in verse 9. Say, do you indeed disbelieve in the one who created the earth in two days, and do you set up equals unto him? That is the Lord of the worlds. So, Allah created the earth in two days. What did he do then? He placed firm mountains therein, rising above it, blessed it, and apportioned its means of sustenance therein in four days, alike for all who ask. So Allah created the earth in two days. Then, over the next four days, he set up all the mountains and provided sustenance, i.e. food, for all the creatures who would need it. What did he do next? Then he turned to heaven while it was smoke, and said unto it and unto the earth, Come willingly or unwillingly, they said, We come willingly. So the earth was up and running, but the heaven was still just smoke. Then he decreed that they be seven heavens in two days, and revealed to each heaven its command. And we adorned the lowest heaven with lamps and a guard. That is the decree of the mighty, the knowing. So Allah turned the smoke into the seven heavens after he set up the earth. He adorned the lowest heaven with lamps referring to the stars. The lowest heaven which contains the stars is the universe that we're familiar with. This means that the seven heavens and the stars came after the earth. Putting this together with Surah 21 verse 30, the heavens and the earth were initially together, but Allah clothed them asunder so that the earth was separate from the heavens, i.e. the universe. Allah started working on the earth first. Once he got the earth up and running, he turned to the heavens, which were still just smoke, and fashioned them into the seven heavens, and then filled the lowest heaven with stars. Does this sound like the Big Bang Theory in a nutshell? If this is Allah trying to describe the Big Bang, Allah is the worst communicator ever. But Zakir Naik isn't done misrepresenting science and the Quran. Tell us about the smoke, Dr. Naik. Today the scientists they tell us that initially the celestial matter of the universe, it was in the form of gas. And the Arabic word used in this verse of Surah Fusila, chapter 41, verse number 11, is Dukhan. Dukhan does not merely mean gas, it specifically means smoke. So, scientists tell us that the celestial matter was initially in the form of gas, but the Quran says smoke. Smoke includes gas, but most gas is not smoke. Does this mean that the Quran is wrong? And today scientists say that smoke is a more closer and more scientific as compared to gas because that time it was hot. Imagine the Quran mentions 1400 years ago which we discovered recently that the initial celestial matter of the universe it was in the form of smoke. Islam's greatest living apologist just claimed that scientists tell us that it's more accurate to refer to the initial celestial matter as smoke because it was hot. And today scientists say that smoke is the more closer and more scientific as compared to gas because that time it was hot. Let me ask those of you who study science. Have you ever, anywhere in your entire life, met a scientist who would say that if a gas gets hot, you call it smoke? According to Zagar Naik, scientists tell us that the correct term for hot gas is smoke. 
Does this man have any clue what he's talking about? Smoke is given off by the burning of organic material, wood, paper, coal, things like that. Organic material contains carbon. There was precisely zero organic material for a long, long time after the Big Bang because carbon hadn't been invented yet. So no scientist in the world would call the early gases smoke just because they were hot. Do you know what the scientific term for hot gas is? Hot gas. Now think about how Islamic Dawah works. Think about what people like Zakir Naik do to convince their listeners that the Quran contains miraculous scientific knowledge. They misrepresent science and they misrepresent the Quran. The Big Bang Theory claims that initially there was a singularity. A singularity is nothing like smoke. So Zakir Naik changes it to a nebula, which still isn't smoke, but it's close enough to deceive his audience. Then Zakir Naik says that the Big Bang was the separation of the nebula into the galaxies, stars, the sun, the moon, and the earth. That's not what the Big Bang was, but even more important, Zakir Naik leaves out the fact that the earth didn't form until about 9 billion years after the Big Bang. Zakir Naik goes to two verses, both of which claim that the earth was already there at the beginning. One of the verses states that Allah separated the earth from the heavens, which, according to Zakir Naik, means that the Big Bang was Allah separating the earth from the universe. The other verse says that the heaven was smoke. Smoke, according to Zakir Naik, is what scientists call any gas when it gets hot. Of course, Zakir Naik leaves out the rest of the passage, which claims that the earth was a finished product before Allah fashioned the heavens and created the stars. So in order to pull a miracle out of the Quran, like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat, Islam's greatest living apologist has to lie about science and distort the Quran. The only miracle here is that these Islamic Dawagandists managed to convince more than a billion people that the Quran is filled with scientific miracles. But hey, that's magic. Welcome to Dawah.